Nehemiah in chapter 8. And uh, last time uh, we saw they were having basically a service. They were meeting at the water gate. And uh, they were getting, they, that, at the water gate they could get the physical water that they need, but they also, this time, they were getting the spiritual water that they need. Needed. They were having a service, if you will, a, a, almost like a church service. They were reading the Bible. They brought, a Bible, they brought the, the books of the law to Ezra and asked him to read to them. And uh, so he read the Bible to them. And uh, we saw there was many similarities between that event and our services today. Uh, we saw they gathered together as men and women. And not only was it men and women, it was anybody who could understand it. And so I take it that they had some nursery workers. <coughs> Say, how do you figure that? Because the ones who, were not, who could not understand were not there. Uh, so that means somebody was watching the ones that could not uh, understand. So that would be young know, babies, right? Young you know, children that could not understand. But um, anyway, they gathered together as one man. Talked about the unity and how the unity is important. And they listened to Ezra read the Bible. And uh, he stood on a pulpit. Now, uh, apparently that pulpit was not like this. Uh, you know, I call the podium the pulpit. But apparently the pulpit is just a raised platform. And that's where he stood. And it was apparently a little bit high. But he stood up there that way all of the people could see and uh, that whenever he got ready to read the Bible, everybody stood up out of respect for the Word of God. And uh, so you can see some preachers even today that will ask you to stand for the reading of the Word of God. And everyone said, Amen, Amen. So now you know why people say Amen in the church. They lifted up their hands, they up their hands and bowed their heads. Yeah, they lifted up their hands, they bowed their heads. Uh, they, since they worship the Lord, they bow their faces to the ground. So uh, you might see some church somewhere where they, you know, when they pray, they may bow all the way down to the floor. It might seem strange to all of us, but uh, you might see where they get that from. They get that from the Bible. So, and Ezra gave blessing, praise, and adoration for God. Then the people were told to drink the sweet and eat the fat. So I take it they had sweet tea in that day because they drank the sweet. So I don't know that they did, but it sounds good to me. They probably put some honey in their tea. You know? <laughs> um, but anyway, they drank, and he told them they needed to do that. You basically break your diet plan because uh, we want you to rejoice today. This is a day of celebration. So that's what they told the people. And they were told not to weep. Um, they said, the joy of the Lord is your strength. And they said, we don't want you to mourn. We want you to be happy. So, um, you know, we talk about the importance of having a good attitude and, uh, and being cheerful. And, um, and then, you know, it's interesting. It, it says that they caused them to... Um, let's see if I can find it here. In verse 8 of chapter 8 says, So they read in the book of the law of God distinctly and gave the sense and caused them to understand the reading. And, you know, I, I was thinking about that this week. I was thinking, you know, you have some people who think that people aren't supposed to understand the Bible. Uh, but as you can see, that is not what God wants. God wants us to understand the Bible. He wants us to dig into His Word. He wrote the Bible so that we could understand what he was saying. And uh, so he didn't give them the words of the law in Latin. He didn't give them the words of the law in some other language. He made it so they could understand what was being read. And um, in fact, if you look in the New Testament, you see that, you know, you, you see that the Bereans, and I believe it's in the book of Acts. Our pastor will probably get to that at some point. Bereans were more noble than the people in Thessalonica. And so why is that? Because they searched the scriptures to see if those things were so. They wanted to know if they, if they were telling the truth or not. So they searched the scriptures. And 
So that's what God wants for us to do. He wants us to search the Bible, learn the Word of God. That is very important to the Lord. So let's start, pick up here at verse 10. Verse 10 of it, uh, Nehemiah chapter 8. <clears throat> Says, then he said unto them, Go your way, eat the fat, and drink the sweet, and send portions unto them for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy unto our Lord. Neither be ye sorry, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. We mentioned that a little bit uh, last week, and well, I, I didn't really say everything I wanted to say about that. You know, a lot of people are not, if they see that we as Christians are in a bad mood, or we're, you know, we're angry, or we're, uh, we're always sad and depressed, you know, they're probably not going to want what we have. You know, Pastor mentions that sometimes. I think there is something special about seeing people that are in a good mood, that are having a good time, that are enjoying life and, and rejoicing. And, uh, and uh, so the joy of the Lord is our strength. Not only will you affect people around you if you have the joy of the Lord in your life, but you also affect your own life, uh, lift your own spirits, and they give you the extra strength that you need. Um, I watched this uh, this show one time. These guys were uh, they were sparring each other, and uh, and they were they were even match for each other. They were going at it. And they were kicking and punching. You know they had boxing gloves on, they're going at each other, and neither one of them could win. And finally, one, one of them, he saw a little shape of a smile on the wall, and he realized, he thought back in the time, and he remembered something about, it. he smiled, but if he, had, had, if he had, if he was happy, then he would be victorious or something. So he starts walking around with a smile on his face, and then he started tearing the guy up. You know? I don't know that that's going to give you all that much strength like that. But anyway, it just made me think, when I saw this verse, it made me think of that guy spar, um, you know, and, and had that smile on his face. If we have a good attitude, have God's joy in our life, then we will have a lot of strength. God's joy gives our strength. And uh, so keep that in mind, um, that God wants us to have, to enjoy life and to to keep a good attitude. All right, verse, let's see, verse uh, 12. <clears throat> let's look at verse 11. So the Levites steal all the people, saying, Hold your peace, for the day is holy, neither be ye grieved. And all the people went their way to eat and to drink and to send portions and to make great mirth, because they had understood the words that were declared unto them. So they understood the Bible, and that helped them to lift their spirits. And uh, so, you know, you'd say, well, how can I get in a good mood? Well, I, you probably could just read the Bible. And as you read the Bible, God will lift your spirits. And uh, so, and uh, you know, I, I like to encourage to think, to think about the Bible this way. If, if you go through the books of the Bible, first of all, you need to I encourage you to memorize the books of the Bible. Um, and you say, why is that? Well, because then you get an order of the Bible. I had to learn the books of the Bible when I was a kid. And then after you know the books of the Bible, then you can know the, the, it helps you to understand the history. And then you can go through each of those books and say, well, what is this book about? What is this book about? And as you look at each book of the Bible, you know, ask yourself, do I know what this book is about? Is about you know do I know and, and there's even books in the Bible that I still need to learn more uh, but and, you know do I know what the book of Philippians is about do I know what the book of Colossians is about and um, you know that's a good test you know a good way to increase your knowledge of the, of the Word of God is to go through the Bible and, 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 and think you know do I know what this is about and, you know, I'll be honest with you, I'll study books of the Bible, and then I'll, I'll go later, and I'll, I'll, be, I'll be like, man, I studied that years ago, but now I kind of forget what was in that book. So, you know, i got to go back and study it again. So uh, that's a good test, I think, to help learn the Word of God. 
Let's look at verse 13. And on the second day were gathered together the chief of the fathers of all the people, the priests and the Levites, unto Ezra the scribe, even to understand the words of the law. And they found written in the law which the Lord had commanded by Moses that the children of Israel should dwell in booths from the feast of the seventh month, and that they should publish and proclaim in all their cities and in Jerusalem, saying, Go forth unto the mount, and fetch olive branches, and pine branches, and myrtle branches, and palm branches, and branches of thick trees, to make booths as it, as it is written. So the people went forth and brought them and made themselves booths, every one upon the roof of his house, and in their courts, and in the courts of the house of God, and in the street of the water gate, and in the street of the gate of Ephraim. And all the congregation of them that were coming in out of captivity made booths, and sat under the booths. For since the days of Jeshua the son of Nun, under that day had not the children of Israel done so. And there was very great gladness. Also day by day, from the first day unto the last day, he read in the book of the law, of God, and they kept the feast seven days, and on the eighth day was a solemn assembly according unto the man. So here we see what we call some people. Sometimes it's called in the Bible the Feast of Tabernacles. Uh, here it's called uh, the Feast of Booths. Um, and if you want to write this down, you can look up Leviticus chapter 23. And in Leviticus 23, that's where God gave the instruction that they were to have this feast. And uh, basically a feast of eight days, and it was a time of celebration. And um, as you look at how they built these, these, you know, I always call them tents because that's what tabernacle means, it's a tent. But as you look at how they built these, they actually built them out of branches. And you see all the different branches there they use. They use myrtle branches and palm branches and, um, and all those other um, branches, olive branches, all these different kinds of branches, and they put it together to make them a little hut, if you will, to live in. And uh, they lived in that little hut for one week. And uh, what was the purpose of that? Who, who remembers, who can tell us what the purpose of this feast was? They were to live in these, their tents. What were they living in tents for for one week? Anybody remember? Wasn't it for money? Wasn't that food to remember? Yes. It was to remind them of what they went through in the wilderness. Uh, but remember, the children of Israel wandered in the wilderness for 40 years. What did they live in, in that when they were wandering around, they lived in tents, did they not? And so this feast was a celebration to help them to remember that time and to look back at that time and how God brought them through that 40 years. And um, so, you know, and I don't know how they made these things, you know, I'm thinking of, it looks like it was probably like a little fort, you know, like you build as a kid, you know, but, um, but they might have drank some animal skins over or something to block out the rain, I don't know. But it was a lot of fun for them. Uh, a lot of them, you see here, they put them on their houses. Uh, so apparently they had pretty strong roofs on their houses. And I guess they were pretty flat tops on their houses. So they built these forts on top of their houses. And, uh, hey, yes. Tell me a company that built that. Huh? Say what? Yeah, they lived in the seven days. Yeah. Well, you know, you can build a fort pretty quick. I mean, I guess just chop some branches up, you know, and get some rope and tie the branches together, you know. So, I don't know. They may have taken them a few days. Yeah. And what I wonder is how they, well, I guess if they're on the roof of their house, they don't have to worry about critters uh, in there. Huh? So, Anyway, but that's what they did, and, uh, and it was a time of rejoicing and celebration, and uh, they, you see there in verse uh, 17, the last part, and there was very great gladness. So this was a big fun time for them. I can see all the boys, you know, having a big time chopping up these branches and building these things, you know, and uh, I don't know, I'm sure, 
you think girls would enjoy this too? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> anyway, my wife, she doesn't like to go camping. That's why <laughs> She goes camping. She wants to camp in a, in a camper. Anyway, um, but it's interesting, verse 17, they had not celebrated this Feast of Tabernacles, or this Feast of Booths, since the days of Joshua, the son of the, um, Jesh it says Jeshua, but that's Joshua. That's way, way, way back. I mean, this was a long time ago. Uh, Moses was the one who brought them out of the wilderness, and then Joshua was the one who brought them into the promised land, that was like, I, I had to look at how many years ago that was, but that was before all the judges, that was before all the kings, I mean, that was a long time ago, uh, they had never celebrated that Feast of Tabernacles. Um, but you know, I think that when we look at this, we can think about, we talk about those hard times, so we go think about those times God has brought us through uh, in our lives. We can look back at that and say God was faithful then. How much more is God going to be faithful now? How much more is God going to help me uh, now if I see what He brought me through? And that is what the lesson of this Easter Tabernacles was. Is to say, hey, look back at what God brought for 40 years. They were in the wilderness, and they never went hungry. God provided the manna from heaven to feed them. God provided them the water that they needed to drink. And, um, and we're going to see as we get through uh, the next chapter, we're actually going to talk about some of that. So, um, anyway, um, folks, I want to encourage you to put a smile on your face because God, there's things that uh, we may face from God faithful, and he's been faithful in the past, but we'll look back at that and give us the encouragement we need to get through the things that we face now. Chapter 9, verse 1, let's read that. It says, Now in the twenty and fourth day of this month, the children of Israel were assembled with fasting and with sackcloths and earth upon them. And the seed of Israel separated themselves from all the strangers and stood and confessed their sins and the iniquities of their fathers. And they stood up in their place and read in the book of the law of the Lord their God one fourth part of the day, and another fourth part they confessed and worshipped the Lord their God. All right, so the time frame is, is now moved on. They are no longer in the Feast of Tabernacles. Uh, it is the 24th day of the month. Feast of Tabernacles, they celebrated that starting on the 15th day of the month, and it lasted for eight days, so that'd be 22, uh, basically the 22nd is when it would have ended. So this is the 24th. This is a couple of days later. And we see here that they are concerned about having a right relationship with God. In verse 2, we see that they are confessing their sins. Uh, you know, that's something that is important in our lives. We need to remember that sometimes, you know, you might forget. Hey, you know, I need to make sure that my heart is in tune with God. I need to make sure that I've confessed any sins in, our life, in, in my life. Um, and I believe as God shows you sins, you know, that we should say, Hey, Lord, please forgive me for that. And help me to do what's right. Um, so we need to always be seeking the Lord's forgiveness. And uh, now once you have confessed the sin to the Lord, and, and maybe you pray, you know, two or three times, Lord, please forgive me for that. I'm sorry for that. You know, but after that, God does forgive us. And we need to trust in that. We need to remember that. So, yes, we need to always make sure that our heart is clean. David even prayed and said, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and see if there be any wicked way in me. You know, we need to say, God, you know, if there's anything in my life I need you to help, I need help with, I need you to get cleaned out. Look in my life and help me, and you know, clean it out. Help me to to have that right, pure relationship with you. And so that is what uh, we see here. They were doing. They were trying to make sure they had a right relationship with the Lord. Um, 
verse 3, they read the Bible one-fourth of this day. And uh, then they confessed their sin and they worshipped one-fourth of the day. So basically, they were wor worshipping God for a half of a day. And, uh, you know, you got some people, they don't even want to hear the Bible being read for ten minutes, much less one-fourth of the day. Uh, we do. You know, th there again, it points us to the fact that we need to be in the Word of God, studying the Word of God, learning the Word of God. And, uh, you know, I wonder if, if people really want God to be pleased with their life, if we really want God to work in our life, then we need to try. You know, we need to try to have a good relationship with Him. You know, you see, some people that pastors not even done with the message, and what do they do? They want to walk out the door before he's even done. Uh, they got somewhere they got to be. And, uh, you know, I just want to say this. Nothing is more important than our relationship with God. Nothing is more important than that. We need to put God first in our life. Make sure that we have a humble heart and that a heart that wants to please God. Uh, we need to be eager to hear God's Word taught. And that's how these people were. They wanted to hear the Word of God. Let's look at verse 4. Then stood up upon the stairs of the Levites, Jeshua and Bani, Cadmiel, Shebaniah, Bani, Sherebiah, Bani, and Chenani, and cried with a loud voice unto the Lord their God. Then the Levites, and then the list all those men again, said, Stand up and bless the Lord your God forever and ever, and blessed be them thy glorious name, which is exalted above all blessing and praise. Above all blessing and praise. Let's stop there. So we see here these Levites, they stand up, they cry out with a loud voice, and they ask the people to stand up, and they glorify the Lord. And, uh, you know, I think sometimes we need to just spend a little time glorifying the Lord. In fact, Jesus said when we pray, he said, pray after this manner. And the first thing he said was, hallowed be thy name. In other words, uh, God's name should be highly revered and respected as holy. And so I think when we start off our prayers, we need to think about how holy uh, God is in just give praise and adoration to Him. Um, and that's what they did here. And, uh, so that's a good thing. To, you know, it may sound a little strange, especially if uh, you, know, you didn't grow up just uh, in a church or whatever. They just, you know, says, you know, God, I praise you and thank you and, and I just want to glorify you today. Um, but that's what these people so I think that is a good thing, just to give reverence to God. And then the next part here in chapter 9 is they gave, they, they gave basically a history of everything God had brought the Israelites through. And uh, so, you know, and, and we talked about looking back at the things God has brought us through and, and, and let that give us strength for the things we face. And that really is, uh, I think, the purpose of them going through this history. And so we're going to look at this history. And I think this history of the Israelites is good for us to know as well because it helps them, you know, it helps understanding the Bible a lot. So we're going to spend a little time here looking at this history. But the very first part is in verse 6. It says this, they said, Thou, even thou, art Lord alone. Thou hast made heaven, the heaven of heavens, with all their hosts, the earth and all things that are therein, the seas and all that is therein, and thou preservest them all, and the host of heaven worshipeth thee. So what's the first thing in history that ever happened? Well, it's, it's right there. God created everything, right? That was the very first thing. He made everything. And not only did he make everything on earth, but it says uh, he made everything in the heaven. Uh, he made the heaven of heavens and with all their host. So that means God made all the angels. All the cherubims were made by God. 
I, I got another one for you. You might be surprised at all the demons were made by God. I say, demons? God made the demons? Well, demons were angels, and they basically followed Satan in rebellion against God. So, yes, he made the demons. Uh, he, he gave them their choice, and they chose to reject God. And they went their own way. And, uh, in fact, Satan was a cherub. God made the cherubs. And, uh, Satan had his heart lifted up with pride and rebelled against God. So, God made everything that's in heaven. There's probably creatures in heaven and things in heaven. I'm sure there's a lot in heaven that we have no idea what is, you know, what is in heaven where God lives. Um, but God made everything there. Then we see God made the earth and all things that are therein. You know, you think about all the plants, all the different kinds of trees, and all the animals, and the birds, and even mankind. God made it. It's in our earth. And then the seas. It says He made the seas and all that's therein. All the schools of fish, the sea turtles, the whales, the, the sharks, and, and octopus, and, and you know, there's probably millions of things in the ocean. All of that is God made. And, uh, you know, I think it's ironic that National Geographic, they would not exist today if, if God had not made all that stuff. Uh, he did make all that stuff. And, and uh, you know, it's amazing the things that God has created. Then, the next thing that happened in history, and, and they don't mention it here, but I'm just going to go ahead and, and bring it to your attention. After God created everything, then he made Adam and Eve. And, um, and, and then Adam and Eve sinned, and re rejected, uh, well, they, they disobeyed God, I should say, and uh, then they went out of the garden, and then there was, they multiplied, and had many children, and then they, next in the Bible you see Noah, and uh, of course God told Noah to build an ark, and then, uh, then Rains came and flooded the earth. And then Noah and his family kept safe on the ark with, with uh, many animals, all of the animals, uh, you know, two of every kind. And, uh, then you get to another important person. And who can think of that? Who knows what the next important person in the Bible would be after Noah? Anybody have an idea? Abraham. Yeah. We're out of time, so we'll talk about Abraham next time. So, Abraham is a really important man. A lot of things we learned from studying about Abraham. Mr. So, Frank, dear Heavenly Father, thank you for your many blessings. Lord. Lord, I just pray that uh, you would help us to keep your joy in our lives, Lord. I pray that uh, we would have the strength to go through you each and every day, Lord. And we would stay close to you in your word, Lord. And we would study your word that we might glean from you, Lord, and that we might gain strength from the things that you teach us. I pray that uh, you would help us to praise and honor you, Lord, and to give you the proper respect that you deserve. I pray that uh, you would lead and guide and direct us in our lives. Pray all these things in Jesus' name.